In this video tutorial, we are going to discuss the rotational symmetry of a square. This is a diagram of a square. And let's say that this point is the center of this square. And around this center, around this center, we are going to rotate this square in a clockwise direction. Doesn't matter whether you are going to rotate it clockwise or anti-clockwise our result is going to be the same okay so for our discussion we will discuss only the clockwise rotation so this will be the center of rotation this will be the center of rotation okay and the angle by which you will rotate this square will be the angle of rotation will be the angle of rotation now we have drawn two axes passing through this center we have highlighted these two these two parts of these two axes because and this also this corner or this vertex by p so that you can notice and you can understand the movement or the rotation of this square okay imagine that we rotate this square by 45 degree so when we rotate this square by 45 degree angle of rotation will be 45 degree when we have rotated this the new position of this square is this one now tell me one thing is this figure exactly the same as this one well the answer is no this is different therefore we will say at the angle of rotation 45 degree we don't have rotational symmetry because these two figures are not the same now we further rotate it by 45 degree so initially it was 45 now we are further rotating it by 45 that means from the initial position now we are rotating by 90 degree so when we rotate it by 90 degree clearly this part the highlighted part is this one and this highlighted part is here this point therefore moves to this new position now tell me one thing for the angle of rotation 90 degree are these two diagrams or figures exactly the same or not well the answer is yes completely yes they are exactly the same therefore for the angle of rotation 90 degree we have rotational symmetry for a, of a square okay we further rotate it by 90 degree because now we can clearly see that by every moment of uh, a rotation of 90 degree we are going to get the rotation symmetry right so if we further rotate it by 90 degree we'll get something like this right so this one will come here and this one will come here and that is what we have here so by now we have moved by total of what 180 degree 90 degree initially here further 90 degree means total 180 degree so tell me at the angle of rotation whether we have rotational symmetry for a square or not yes these two figures are the same we have rotational symmetry we again rotate it by 90 degree and the new position is this one right so at the angle of rotation of 270 degree Tell me whether we have the rotation symmetry or not. You will say yes, we have because these two figures are the same. We further rotate it by 90 degree, and this point P, re, uh, you know, travels the whole 360 degree and reaches back to the point where it started from. So, at the angle of rotation 360 degree, 360 degree, we are again having rotational symmetry, right? So, if I ask you, at how many positions do we have rotational symmetry? So you will say that first at, sorry, first at 90 degree, then at 180 degree, then at 270 degree, then at 360 degree. It means that we have four, we have four, orders we have four orders of 
rotational symmetry for a square. Right? They were 90 degree, 180 degree, 270 degree, and 360 degree. Now here is the thing that every figure, every each and every figure has one order of rotational symmetry and that is actually 360 degree, right? Every figure, but we are not interested in that. Now you can imagine that you take any, you know, even an irregular figure, irregular figure, and if you try rotating it by 360 degree completely, it of course is going to reach, you know, back at the initial position. So in any condition, uh, for any figure, we'll have one order of rotational symmetry for 360 degree, but we are not interested in that. We are interested, apart from 360 degree, at what angle of rotations can we, angles of rotation can we have, uh, uh, you know, rotational symmetry. So for the square, it's 90 degree, 180 degree, 270 degree, 360 degree. Now, we have four rotation uh, order of orders of rotational symmetry. In this case, now if I ask you, can you tell me the line of uh, lines of symmetry? How many lines of symmetry do we have for a square? You will say that if this is the center. And if we take only this line, right, if we take this, this line and this line will surely pass through the midline, if it passes through these two midlines of these two line segments, then this square is actually divided into two equal halves. The upper half and the lower half and the two halves are actually the mirror images of each other. Therefore, this is the line of symmetry. Similarly, if we draw a line passing from the midpoint of this line segment passing through the center and then again passing through the midpoint of this line segment will have again one line of one more line of symmetry that will divide into two equal halves that is the right half and the left half and the right and the left halves are actually the mirror images of each other but here's the point we have two more lines of symmetry one will be this one okay so if we draw a line that is passing, you know, exactly connecting the opposite vertices and passing through the center. Of course, that will pass through the center. That will again divide these two triangles, uh, this square into two equal halves. Can you see this upper portion and this lower portion? These two upper and lower halves are actually the mirror images of each other. We'll have one more. If I pass from here. It's not very perfect. Just imagine that it's exactly joining the two vertices. So again, we'll have two halves, equal halves, the upper one and the lower one. These two are actually the mirror images of each other. So it means we have four lines of, we have four lines of symmetry. for a square, right? Four lines of symmetry for a square and four orders of rotational symmetry for a square. Not in every figure, we have the lines of symmetry equal to the orders of rotational symmetry, right? Okay. 